friends, we are back here on Adobe Live on Behance. Make sure you're watching us at be.net slash live. I'm Kathleen, and this is my new friend, Mark Vismiani. Welcome, Mark. Hi. Well, How's we're not like that new of friends. We've been friends for like two days. <laughs> it's like best friend status. Uh, Mark, how are you feeling about live streaming? Uh, I'm enjoying it. Yes. Uh, I've done Twitch before, but now I'm actually showing my face. Uh, so that's a little scary, but I, I'm enjoying it. Cool, you got your cool pupper jacket on yeah. <laughs> in honor of the challenge that we have today, but I'll get into that after uh, I'll let Mark introduce himself a little bit. Tell us what your story is, what your style is, what's going on? So I am a freelance illustrator. I uh, try to do a little bit of illustration like uh, for companies and doing some assets for video games. Yes. Uh, I primarily do vector art. Uh, I've done traditional stuff in the past, but I try not to. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. You're over that. So now it's just pretty much vector art. Uh, I try to keep it lineless and just using bold, really saturated colors. Really nice. And you can see on my screen right now that I'm showing a little bit of your hollow loot. Oh, yeah. That was a challenge I did this past October. Oh, nice. So this I've, is just a self-challenge you did for yourself? Uh, someone made a list on Tumblr. I forget who. Ah. Uh, and I kind of made a different weapon design based on each uh, monster or mythical creature for the day. Right. Was it Drawloween that you were following? Uh, don't know. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. Don't care. Everyone was doing Inktober, so I did hollow loot. I really, hallelujah, I love it. So this is actually kind of similar to what you're working on yesterday. yesterday. Yep. Maybe we could show that and maybe walk through. Uh, don't have it on Oh, you don't have yeah. it, <laughs> Never mind. So I promise it was similar to the hollow loot. Um, and you can see from his portfolio the kind of work he does. And today, what are you gonna focus on? Today I'm gonna do a character design. Uh, I think I'm gonna do some kind of warrior night hunter kind of mm -hmm. person, not sure. Just gonna see where it takes me. Yeah, I'm excited for this because I feel like we could get some cool like ideas from chat. Like yesterday they told you to make the pommel of the sword into like a fly. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can come up with some <laughs> sort of magical artifacts that this hunter slash knight should be working with. And while you're getting your, uh, getting started there, I'll just tell you all in chat about the challenge that we have today. Uh, it is the year of the dog. Chinese New Year, so we want you to make a Chinese New Year illustration uh, invitation. We have a template for you over on be.net slash live. Click on the challenge tab. You'll have all the information there. You've got about an hour and a half to finish that. And we even have submissions from last stream that we still need to look at. There have been so many awesome and strong submissions today. Uh, so get that going. And like I said, Mark's wearing his dog jacket today in honor of the challenge, so make Mark proud. Do a good <laughs> pupper. Cool, so how are you getting started here? What's your thought process? Uh, right now I'm gonna start with the head and just kinda use uh, the circle as a building block. Oh, okay. So I've been using like different shapes here and I'm just adjusting the points using the uh, direct selection tool. Right. Uh, right now he looks kinda angry. <laughs> <laughs> I like him, just peeking out. And it, this was kind of what we talked about yesterday, how you just create your work very fluidly. You mm -hmm. don't do really like a bottom layer. You kind of just build all the way to finish. Yeah. Um, is there a reason that you like working that way? Uh, primarily, I like just getting things done mm -hmm. and being really quick with it. Yes. And the nice thing about Illustrator is that it's so easy to change things on the fly. So I can just adjust the size, I can adjust the colors. Mm -hmm. I don't have to really worry about which layers they are. And if I group things together, it's easy to edit large pieces at a time. Yeah, right. It's like in Photoshop when you have things layered together, you can move them around. They work mm -hmm. pretty similarly. This is so cute. I feel like oftentimes people are see these kind of illustrations and they're like, how does this happen? Like, how do they make these cute eyes? They're so uniform and perfect, but it's really just building with yeah. shapes. Really cool. Melissa says, I've been waiting for this stream all day. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> I know, I remember seeing you here yesterday, Melissa, and then you popped in during Kirk's stream too. Thanks for sticking around. I always love seeing uh, new chat members. So if this is your first time here on Adobe Live and Mark is here with you, say hello. Let us know where you are from. Uh, if you are a designer or an illustrator 
or a hobbyist, or as I like to call them, a dabbleist, uh, what's your favorite program? What's your creative story? Tell me the whole thing <laughs> in chat. <laughs> a whole biography. Yeah, come on. The moderators won't mind. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Lauren says, hello. Lauren, I remember your name. Thanks for being here. Uh, Kathy is in Montreal. Awesome. Ooh, Kevin is already coming at you with the good questions. <laughs> Kevin always has great questions. Uh, he's wondering, how do you make your decisions during your illustration process if you move so quickly? Uh, I kind of have like an idea of what I want to do mm -hmm. or what kind of shape I want to use. So like for this one, I'm going to be doing a lot of circles. So I want things to be a little bit more rounded. Gotcha. So I'm going to pretty much use the circle as the base for everything. And then I'm going to just chop it up however I need it. Mm -hmm. So like for the ear, I'm going to just do a half a circle. Control C, Control F, and make it a little bit smaller. I can adjust the color a little bit. And boom, now I got an ear. Oh. Control <laughs> C, Control F again. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna add these two parts together here. And now I can use the live corners to kind of add a little bit of detail there mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more complex looking. Wow, I see. Group that together, make it a little bit smaller, bring it to the back, and copy it, transform, reflect. He's so cute! And then I have my transform menu here and I keep everything on a 6x6 six six canvas right. and then that way it's easy to center things. I can just kind of put them all at three, three, and then it's that. <laughs> there you go. Chat, did you catch that? <laughs> Does that make sense to you, Kevin? Is that Kevin that asked that? Yeah. Uh, Kat says, I'm still here. Kat, you were the winner of the giveaway last stream. Congratulations. Miriam is saying, did this all just happen now? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And I have a feeling that you might be able to do more than one in our two hour stream. <laughs> Possibly. It could happen. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to just adjust the curvature here a little bit. Bring it up a little. I think that looks good. Bring it in. All right. Oh, he needs eyebrows. <laughs> oh, does he? Is that uh, a prerequisite? It'll make him look less angry. I mean, he doesn't look that angry right now. No, he just looks a little bit terrifying. <laughs> Staring into your soul. <laughs> uh, Kathy is wondering, do you ever use rulers? Um, like the rulers on the top and the side? Yeah, or even no. like smart guides, no? I think I have smart guides on. Gotcha. I'm not exactly sure what my setup is. Mm -hmm. This is just like the, the standard whatever Illustrator had when I opened it. <laughs> And it works for you. Yeah. So I'm assuming you don't uh, kind of customize your workspaces very much. Not too much. Gotcha. Like right now, I act, I'm actually in painting for some reason. Huh. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. Chat, what kind of workspaces do you use in Illustrator or Photoshop? I'm usually just in Essentials. Don't have any secrets. Safira says, OMG, so cute. Agreed. And it looks like you're using a pretty cool color palette. Mm -hmm. How are you deciding to use that? Uh, I kind of decided that I want this guy to be purple. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just trying to go with colors that are around that in the color wheel. So blues, greens. I might throw in a complementary color as well. Ooh, a little pop color. Mm -hmm. Maybe for his uh, clothing. Nice. Uh, Hector uses a lightly altered essentials preset. Nice. Noelle uses essentials and custom. Melissa is also essentials. See? Oh, wow. All <laughs> essentials. It's not like the different workspaces like take tools away from you. It just makes other some tools readily available. Yeah, it takes out a little bit of the clutter. Right. That was a cool little mm -hmm. trick you did by just rotating the mm -hmm. hair. Yeah, I tried to keep things really simple. <laughs> oh, cool. I like that it's in front now. Nice. It's 
got a cool haircut. <laughs> I'm digging it. Yeah, I'm thinking mohawk. That would look pretty cool. He'd be uh, pretty uh, pretty tough if he had a mohawk. Automatically plus <laughs> ten defense. So you said that you opened a magic pack yesterday, and that's how you were inspired to mm -hmm. make your frog card. Um, was there a specific inspiration for today for this little uh, guy? No, not really. Just but, like, yeah, this sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> since it, it, the challenge has to do with dogs, I was thinking I was going to give him a dog companion. Oh, of some sweet! Sort. I would love to see how you make a dog. So he is looking pretty good so far. Uh, I grouped them together, so now I can just kind of go in like this. And now I'm only working on all these shapes, which right now isn't really doing anything for me because there's nothing else. But later on when I have like other things going on, his clothes and all that kind of stuff, it's going to be really helpful. Right. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how people organize. Oh, look at his head. That's awesome. <laughs> how they organize their their process, their workspaces. I'm wondering, chat, hello, Ember, what's up? Chat, do you have any specific ways that you organize your files? Do they need to be production ready? Let us know. I feel like I can always learn from you, chat. Uh, you know what? Let's give this guy a really nasty scar on his eye. That's nasty. also something that makes people tougher for some reason. At least in movies. <laughs> it's true. Whenever Adobe Live, who's in the chat right now, whenever they play video games, they always make a character with a scar eye. It's like <laughs> <laughs> his memento mori, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ember always makes folders after the mayhem. Mm. Nice. So you're kind of like a, you make a mess and then you clean it up. That's kind of how I am too. But I understand my mess. I know where everything is, it just looks crazy. Kimberly uses cabinets to organize her. So Kimberly, <laughs> do you, are you a like traditional artist then? You actually have physical goods? All right, Kevin just has one rule, easy to learn. Organize everything right from the start. That works. Definitely can't go wrong. Um, let's see. Oh, this is like his little shave lines. Yeah. Nice. Just kind of follow the curve. Yeah. There we go. Miriam right. says, this <laughs> fellow looks so mischievous. I love it. He does look <laughs> like a little punk. Uh, I can give him earrings too. Heck yeah. Just little rings. Melissa says, Mark is so quick. I know. <laughs> it really is amazing to me that you aren't even really thinking about these little design. Like, it's not like you came in and were like, all right, I'm gonna make them have earrings and freckles and all these things. Just like, you're working and then you're like, that would look cool with earrings. <laughs> I'll make some earrings. Yeah, I've, I've been primarily only using Illustrator for the, like the past four or five years. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to kind of really streamline my process. I was talking with Kirk about this earlier, do you ever tell your clients um, like that you're a quick worker and that makes you a valuable person to have working for them or do you try and keep that quiet so you can take more time if you need it? Uh, I kind of keep it quiet that way if like, I need to rush, mm -hmm. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool how you built that. Maybe you can walk through how you did that so quickly. Sure. So what I did was make a circle copy, paste on top. So now there's two circles. Uh, make it a little bit smaller, highlight them both, use the subtract in Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. 
And then right down the middle like that, I highlight both of these, control copy, uh, paste on top. And then for the first one, I do the, whatever this one is, divide, I think? Intersect? Inter yeah, and then I have this shape. I highlight both of them again, do subtract. Now I have these two. Whoa. So now I can bring it here. <laughs> Take this one, bring it all the way back. If you, if, I don't know how it is on Mac, but on PC it's Control Shift and the uh, left bracket. Yeah, just Command Shift left bracket would be on Mac. And this one I'll just keep on top. Mm -hmm. And to get it curved like that, I'll just use live corners. But the problem here is you know, I'll be missing that part right here. Right. So I will duplicate both of them. Turn them uh, 45 degrees. Uh huh. Delete this one, bring this one to the back, and now I can highlight them, the back ones together and put them together too, right. just to clear it up a little. And there we go. Was that amazing, Chet? <laughs> that was crazy. I think this really shows like a deep understanding of how you build things mm -hmm. and not even really having to think about, like, hmm, how do I solve this problem? You're like, this is how. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Melissa says, my brain just melted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad, question mark? I Is hope that you're covered. Thing? Yeah, <laughs> no, right? <laughs> you got insurance? You need those things. Kathy says, wow, awesome. Yeah, chat, if you have more questions, please ask them. We got Mark here until 5 p.m. Pacific time. So we've got about an hour and a half, a little over that. For more questions, more tutorials, more goodness, we also have about 45 minutes until we're gonna be doing our giveaway for today. Today's giveaway is a lovely illustrator pillow, which Ooh. is perfect for you, because that's your favorite tool. I'm really jealous of whoever wins that. I know, right? <laughs> I want one too. I'm like, come on, Adobe. Come on, I'm just gonna take this one and go sleep with it under the desk. That's what I always do after my streams. <laughs> um, so you could be the winner of this. All you have to do is be signed in on Behance, that's be.net slash live. That's where we live. You use your Adobe ID to sign up, to sign in, but you can also sign up on Behance. Super easy, takes like 30 seconds. And that way you can chat with us. You can click on each other's profiles and check out each other's portfolios. You can enter the giveaway and uh, all kinds of good things. So that will be in about 45 minutes. So stick around for that. He's starting to look more like a pirate. Oh. I don't know, maybe he'll be like a swashbuckling knight of some sort. Who that knows? That is a nice combination. <laughs> it's like Rufio. It's awesome. Uh, Yusuf needs the pillow for his wrist. Are you like resting your wrist on something hard, Yusuf? Is your wrist doing all right? Yeah, you all right? Ooh, they were asking Kirk this earlier. Do you have like struggle with any art pain? Um, wrists or back or anything? Definitely back, but I have a really bad chair at home. Oh. It is broken. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the whole left side doesn't stay together anymore. And my desk, uh, since I built it like on top of an annex, mm -hmm. um, it's about this high, and my chair is about this height. So I'm oh like no. Mark, it's come on. Though. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's good for your shoulders. I don't know, but people in chat were wondering if you have any good exercises or ways to uh, combat I just that. I kind of constantly stretch my wrists. Ah. I go for a walk every day. I try to walk about three miles a day. Cool. That's great. Is that just for combating that, or is it also to get like inspiration, or uh, just to rest my head a little bit? Yeah. And rest my eyes. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. That's the good thing about having a dog. You gotta get outside. Oh, I don't have a dog. Well. I wish I did. You should get one. Write it off <laughs> as an expense. <laughs> uh, Yusuf says, I'm good just when using the mouse for too long, his wrist hurts. Gotcha, Yusuf. I've yeah. tried using like a ergonomic mouse. Yeah, that could be good. Definitely. Maybe even using a tablet as a mouse. It might come with its own issues. True. <laughs> Kiko, or not Kiko, Nico says this guy looks like an awesome punk koala. Koala? I can oh, see I can, that. Yeah, the nose. Low nose, <laughs> yeah. 
cute. So I'm gonna add a pattern to uh, his little neckerchief. And like I said yesterday, I love polka dots. True. So it's gonna be polka dots. Huh, what about polka dots do you like so much? I don't know. <laughs> Just nice on the eyes? Yeah. It's like the simplest pattern you can make. And I like giving a lot of my characters polka dots, uh, especially the male characters, because I just don't think there's enough polka dots in men's fashion. Hey, I respect that. Bring on the dots. Hashtag more dots, please. <laughs> Sammy says this looks like a troll, like a little troll doll. Cute. Oh, yeah, with the hair going up like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, someone was wondering, let's see, it was Miriam, how to design different types of bodies for characters. She often gets stuck in the body area. Um, you know, I've had the same issue too. Hmm. Uh, because usually my go-to is just a circle and then I do like a trapezoid on top, kind of like this. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. So yeah, this is usually my go-to. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried looking at other artists, other uh, mediums, like uh, Leica has really good character designs. Totally. Especially Paranorman. Yes, uh, they're all different. Yeah, and uh, Monsters, Inc. is another really good one. Mm -hmm. So I think for this one, I might try something more squarish. Maybe just a reverse the trapezoid a little bit. Cool. And just to make him look a little more... Menacing. Yeah. Menacing. Ah, so is he supposed to be evil or good? Can't tell. Uh, maybe like an anti-hero kind, ah, of, kind of guy. A little bit of both. Of. Hey, look at that. Uh, Jade, can we, res can we resubmit a challenge design for this stream? We, if you... If, let me start over. If it's a second submission for the same challenge, it just needs to be something completely different. We love seeing your new and improved artwork. So I made that pattern using a clipping mask. So I just made a duplicate of the base shape, put it on top, control seven, ah. clipping mask. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I haven't really used clipping masks much in Illustrator specifically. Try not to use them too often. Yeah, it can be Feel a little like they tough. slow down the machine a mm -hmm. little bit. Yep. I don't know if you guys can hear my laptop. <laughs> it is loud. He laboring. <laughs> but this is better than yesterday when all of your shortcuts were non-existent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> tough. Uh, oh. Ember, oh sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah. I'm gonna say Ember says this illustration looks like my grandpa. So evil to my parents, but so sweet to me. <laughs> That's an incredible <laughs> like likeness, I think. You should show this to him, Ember. Be like, how do they know that's what I look like? And chat, if you are just stopping in, hello, welcome to Adobe Live here on Behance. We are live most weeks, almost every Tuesday through Thursday, uh, 9 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. So if this is your first time tuning in, don't go anywhere because we're here pretty much all the time. Uh, if you're interested in watching the replays of these streams, go on to the YouTube, uh, the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, and these streams are there pretty much immediately after the show. So stick around while it's live and then go watch the replays over the weekend. It's a good way. And next week we're going to have mobile illustration as the topic. So two whole weeks of illustration. Very exciting. Uh, we're gonna have Mark Crilly, Kyle T. Webster, a couple other awesome artists. Robzilla's gonna be here hosting. It's gonna be great. Uh, another tool I love using is the warp tools. If you go to oh. effect, warp, and I like using them when I'm just kinda feeling a little bit lazy on making it a very complex shape like this. So I just kinda made a square made the trapezoid and just curved it. So really simple. It expands uh, appearance and now I can 
change it up even more. There it is. And I think that's good for you specifically because I know you kind of like precision in your mm -hmm. angles and your shapes. So this is a perfectly symmetrical, well-built, some sort of shape. What would that be <laughs> called? Uh, polygon, some sort. <laughs> Um, the background of the template must be red. You can change the colors, Merrick, of the template, but we would ask that you use the template, so thank you for doing so. Talking about the challenge, of course. We've got some challenge entries that I can look at in just a couple minutes. Like I said, we have some from uh, Lydia and Erica's stream that was just before this that didn't get shown. So don't worry, we'll be sure to show those. And then we'll probably show more after we do the giveaway, so in about 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes after that, that's the deadline. The giveaway or the challenge will be over. We'll look at all of the submissions and Mark will have to pick a winner of a free year of Creative Cloud. Which is a great prize. I agree. No reason not to enter this challenge. Oh, cool. I like his little collar. Thanks. Yeah. How did you decide that's the shape that would um, work well for that? Well, I wanted something that's like popped up, mm -hmm. so I figured the kind of base shape that I've, I've been using is the circle. Right. So I wanted to use something like that, so I thought half a circle, it looks like it's curved up. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like a Fonzie kind of type. Mm -hmm. He is a little <laughs> bit of Fonzie. He's just a conglomerate of a lot of great characters. <laughs> oh, Melissa's at work, so she can't enter the challenge. Darn. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Melissa. Well, you'll probably still be at work tomorrow, but maybe during lunch. Unal says he looks like a really young me, like six years old or something. This little <laughs> character does? You must have been a pretty cool looking six year old. Real tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> Triple piercing, polka dot bandana, mohawk. What's up, Dustin Jackson? How you doing? Thanks for being here. Richa says, I did not know you could use warp like that to build these shapes. Mm -hmm. Really cool. I've only started using it recently, so I'm still kind of figuring it out, trying to play around a little bit more with it. But it, it's been a lot of fun. Right, and I feel like, at least in my experience, I've been steered away from using warp tools, uh, perspective tools, and things like that, just because if you don't really know what you're doing, it can look like you used it, like very obvious. I think with this flat illustration style, it works great. This is like the best case use case I've seen for it. Very nice chat. Maybe you can use it in your challenge submissions. All right, Tim is off. See you later, Tim. Thank you, as always, for being here, my friend. Everyone say goodnight to Tim. One of our Hi, amazing, <laughs> goodnight, Tim. One of our amazing moderators here on Adobe Live. We had Voodoo Val in the house a little while ago. Voodoo's also awesome. Adobe Live is obviously always here and always amazing. As well as you, chat. Thank you for being here. Keeping the chat clean, fun, encouraging. We love it. Another trick I like to use when I'm doing multiples is if I wanted to move something the exact same way, Mm -hmm. Control D. Oh yeah, or Command D. Yeah. On a Mac. I love just like pressing it a bunch of times and just seeing it yeah. magically move across. Super awesome. Nice, and little spikes. He is a punk rock dude. <laughs> yeah, right Kevin, it is super late in Germany, so Tim, you better go to bed. You got school in the morning, my friend. Maybe you don't, I don't know. And I'm gonna group these and also use the warp effect. Oh. Mm, let's see, there we go. Oh, you wanted to go the other way. Interesting. Another great thing about grouping everything. Yeah, 
Right, so when you double click, you're going into isolation mode, right? Yep. And then you can finagle all things within the group. That way I don't accidentally click something else or mess with something else. Yeah, you know exactly what you're clicking on. Mm -hmm. Have you ever built like spikes for a spiked jacket before? Mm, like in Illustrator? Yeah. No. It just seems like oh, you knew wait. exactly what you were going to do. <laughs> in Illustrator, yeah, I have. Okay. Real life, no. <laughs> Never casted them or molded them. There was a really big punk scene at my high school when mm. I was growing up. So like there was a whole crew of kids, everyone had spiked leather jackets. Yeah. All into those really strange punk names that were kind of vulgar. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's really funny. So were you part of that no. scene? Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were going to be like, and I was secretly the kingpin. <laughs> <laughs> I was into really weird music. What is weird? What's well, weird to you? I guess in middle school, it would mm. be really weird to be listening to, like, of Montreal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, what is this? Everyone's listening to pop, and I'm listening to, like, weird sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ambient things. That's funny. Uh, Dustin wants to know, what is the purpose of expanding appearance? Uh, well, to exp uh, when I expand it appearance, then I can affect it like other path paths and shapes. Mm -hmm. So like if I did this and then I kind of subtracted like anything else, it would do that. Right. <laughs> so like it'll subtract from the original shape and then do the warp effect. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of unpredictable and I won't really know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I have an idea. Yep. So yeah, it's like you have a shape with an effect on it. It's like a magical spell cast mm -hmm. upon this shape. <laughs> so you don't really know what's going to happen and that magical spell is still there, still doing its own thing and affecting other things. When you expand the appearance, it's like you're uh, committing to that. You're making that spell a part of the shape and then it just becomes a shape again. Mm-hmm becomes blessed with the magical attribute. That is the craziest thing I've said all day. <laughs> <laughs> John says, oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi. <laughs> Great movie. Yes. <laughs> Kat says, seeing this workflow is mesmerizing. Oh, well, thank you. I agree. I was getting mesmerized during Erica and Lydia's stream because they were both like talking so sweetly and kind of quietly. I was just like, oh, getting hypnotized. <laughs> so nice to listen to. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to check that out when I get home. Oh, it was cool. Definitely showed the whole gambit of what Creative Cloud can do. Not the whole gambit, but a lot of it. Mm. Uh, Should I give him pins? Mm. He is a punk. Okay, chat. <laughs> Maybe this is a time where they can say, you should make a little Chinese New Year dog or a star. <laughs> what kind of pin should he have, chat? And then Mark will be able to pick the best option. Or just ignore you all and do whatever he wants to do. Because I'm just saying this arbitrarily. Mark has not said if he wants to do this. Uh, Kimberly says he could have Adobe pins, Ooh. Illustrator pin, like a little pin tool pin, <laughs> robot pin, says Adobe Live, frog pin. Corgi pin. Oh, there's my friend John Hughes. Oh, that's the one who said, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go way back. Back back to your punk days in middle school? No, nah, just college. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, John? Did he also go to RISD? Yeah. Nice, John. He's the one who actually uh, taught me all the stuff I know in Photoshop. It didn't oh. really stick, but he was a good teacher. <laughs> John tried. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John, tell us about your creative journey. And if you have work in your Behance portfolio, people, you can go click on his little face, his little icon, go check it out. You can also do that for each other. I know a lot of the people that are chatting right now are very creative and have things uploaded to their Behance portfolios. This is a great way to grow your creative network. Oh, Anna wants to know, do you sketch your characters first while, or do you just do them straight into the computer? Uh, I usually go just straight into the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Illustrator is like 
you can make a character and just edit it really easily, really quickly. Uh, so I figure like save time, just make it all on the Illustrator. Yeah. It's almost like you are sketching, but you're sketching the finished project. Mm -hmm. but you can just change it so easily as if it were a sketch. Yeah, and if I wanted to change the colors, just highlight him, go to the recolor artwork, yeah. and it gives me all the colors I used. Right, so you pick a color and then you change. You can pick the new color that will replace all mm -hmm. instances of that color. And his head is looking a little small for his body. Ah. And just size it up a little. Yeah, let's cutify him a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's see. Give him really big burly arms. Ooh. Now, uh, using the pen tool, which I don't usually. Okay, what do you usually use, just shapes? Just shapes. Mm -hmm. But I figure it's gonna be a little bit of a weird shape, kind of noodle army. Yep. So I think the pen is great for that. There we go. Boom. So that's one arm. Now, usually I do symmetrical characters, so if I do one arm, just copy and paste, put it over. Gotcha. And a trick I kind of figured out on my own is since this is like right here on that line, mm -hmm. touching, I just make a bar that's wider than the area that I need to um, mirror. Oh no, what are you about to do? Paste it on top, click that, transform, and it's in the exact same spot. What? That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I'm gonna make him look a little bit more like a knight. Ease uh, up a little bit. Oh no, that one's floating. <laughs> oh no, we got a floater. And something is not in the right position. Oh, How do you know? Here. That's three feet. Well. Got a little bit of space here, mm -hmm. and showing more than here. Mm. So <laughs> something is off. Oh, the angle's off. Yeah. <laughs> it's broken. There we go. I think that should do it. Yep. There How we are. There we go. Put this down a little bit. Francisco's wondering how many years have been using Illustrator? You said like five? Yeah, -ish? just about, yeah. Gotcha, and was it love at first use? Or were you like, this is fine? <laughs> but you were kind of a traditional artist back then. Uh, it was a very strange um, journey. Complicated love affair. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> everyone was using like, what was it called, Photoshop. And <laughs> What's that one program called? <laughs> like they would do traditional inking and then Photoshop and mm -hmm. do all that. And I just could not make it work for me. Right. So what I would do is do traditional inking, bring it into Photoshop, uh, make it all black and white bring it into Illustrator, do a live trace, and then color it in using a uh, vector and the uh, pen tool. That's crazy. E oh yeah. <laughs> You're like, I know. <laughs> uh, it would take me like six, seven hours to do something really simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it didn't look good. <laughs> right, so then you're like, screw this Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Let's go over into Illustrator all the time. And that's not to say that Photoshop is bad, you know, yeah. whatever works for you, works for you. Right, like I really, when I open up Illustrator, my like stomach hurts, I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be hard. But when I'm in Photoshop, I'm like, mama's home. This is great. I feel like that happens to a lot of people that I talk to, mm -hmm. well, whenever I say I use only Illustrator, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't know you can do like stuff like this in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Program's a program, you can do whatever you want with it. Hey, I believe that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mm. 
It's the minor details that really get me kind of stuck. Gotcha. What are you having trouble with? I'm just wondering what kind of like armor should I give him right here? Oh. Chat, any thoughts? You guys have any uh, crazy ideas? Mmm. <laughs> so like, are you thinking some sort of gauntlet or? Yeah. Mmm. What kind of crazy gauntlet could he have? He is a knight. Mm. But he's also kind of like a punk. Oh gosh, what did I have? Oh about? no! Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> he's also kind of like a punk swashbuckling knight. Let's see, Siraj says spiky elbow pad. Spiky Sammy elbow says pad. claws. Claws, oh gosh. Weapon for arm, like it could be like two. Um, <laughs> like a hook? <laughs> yeah, a hook, and what are these called? Like a blender bus? Oh yeah. Or, like <laughs> flared out ones. Ooh. Yeah, let's give him a spiked elbow. Cool. Melissa says he looks like a biker knight. <laughs> Total anti-hero. Rollerblade arms. <laughs> That's awesome. Robotic arms, says Rohit. Unicorn horn ideas. on his elbow. Oh yeah, like he has little elbow pads. He's skating. Brass knuckles in the shape of a boom box. Ooh. That's a great idea, Daniel. I also like to reuse colors in different areas. Of so like for the, the shading over here, just gonna reuse this blue. Yeah, and is that the best way that you would recommend to keep a color palette kind of cohesive and also simplified? Uh, I'd say for vector art, mm -hmm. yeah. Because then you have all these shapes and it's lineless, so it's kind of like, if I keep the colors a little bit simple, then mm -hmm. it looks a little bit more complicated in a way. Right. It also creates a nice visual pattern for your eye to move across, like picking up all these little aqua pieces, these magenta pieces. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Donna says, add a machete. Ooh, a machete. Yeah. That's gnarly. He would have some gnarly weapons, I think. Spiky knuckle gloves, says Siraj. You guys are coming up with great tools. Violent tools. <laughs> that kind of reminds me, uh, I made a, a piece of loot a uh -huh. long time ago based on uh, my one of my uh, college roommates. She always wore these big Doc Martens. Oh, nice. So I made these uh, gold ones that had spikes all over them. That's awesome. And she always referred to them to as her um, well, I can't say it, but the B word, kickers. <laughs> there you go. They kick them right out of town. Is that in any of your loot projects on your website? I believe so. I think it's um, number two. Oh, right. Volume two. Let's see if we can find these. I see some other sweet dagger stilettos. Oh, there they are on the bottom left. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's so cool. So many of these, it's just like, where did you get your inspiration, man? <laughs> your brain is wild. Oh, this is from Final Fantasy. Oh, the yeah. Practice guy. This is really, an, I love like making just little assets, digital mm -hmm. visual assets, including weapons and things. This is really tickling my fancy. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Little I'm hoping sword. to do uh, up to 500. Wow, only up to 500, no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've oh, gotten like 400 something. There's a lot of them that I haven't posted yet. You're almost there. Yeah, and I'm hoping to publish a book of some sort, like an art yes. book. Of, people have been requesting them for a while. So. Right, and since they are, they're all in the same format, you could mm -hmm. have like even a cool little square book. Or whatever you want. I also thought about playing cards too, but I'm not sure. Ooh, that's sweet. All right, All right, so these spikes are looking really small compared to that. They are. So I'm gonna go back into the body and do something wild. Wild, huh? Yep. Mike's about to get wild, everybody, hold on. Did you just delete all those spikes? Yes, I did. That's another yeah. great thing about Illustrator. I can just delete things, make it real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have to hold so dearly onto it. 
Mm-hmm. You can also just drag it off your artboard. And if you're like, I still like it, but I don't think I'm going to use it right now. Yeah. So if you have a cool idea and you're like, eh, it doesn't really work for this, you can keep it around for something else. Ooh, Munir has a great question. Mm-hmm. How do you get inspired and how do you pick a color palette for your project? Uh, a lot of different things that inspire me. Like uh, there was one sword I based entirely on a Radiohead song. Whoa, <laughs> so cool. Was so, it like super gloomy and? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, well not Radiohead, it was Tom York, but. Okay. It's, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Of Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually doing a crossword last night and he was the clue. And he's oh. always the clue. It's like, <laughs> who was the front man of Radiohead? I'm like, Tom York, I get it. He has a weird name. It's a good crossword clue. Okay, back to your story, sorry. So yeah, like, <laughs> I, anything and everything can inspire you. Mm-hmm. Just you gotta think of things, think of them in different ways, and just see how you feel about it. <laughs> right. And what about color palettes? How do you pick those? Oh. Same story? Uh, kinda. I'll pick whatever kind of color that I'm in the mood. Mm-hmm. Like, I like using purple, so now I'm just gonna go all purples. Yeah, you're feeling blues, like your aura was very purple today. It was yeah, yeah. Going into work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about auras. Uh, Wani says I would definitely buy Mark's book. Oh, thanks. I would too. I have a be frank. Right? Yeah, right. You got some pre-orders. <laughs> Gotta make that Kickstarter. Uh, Ingen is wondering, how do you make sure that the spikes are equal distant from each other? Uh, the ones on the elbow? I guess so. Well, uh, the base shape is this big blobby thing, mm-hmm. so I would go here, go to transform, and it would give me the X and Y coordinates, and then I just kind of match it with that. That way I know it's going to be equidistant from the middle point of right. the elbow. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Uh, Mariam is wondering, how many artworks do you create each day? Oh, <laughs> that is, that sometimes a really large number, sometimes a really small number. As in zero? Uh, yeah, that's a small number. I was going to say, do you ever <laughs> go a day without creating? I definitely do. Yeah, sometimes uh, you just get burnt out, mm. which isn't good. Uh, well, I wouldn't, don't get burnt out. Never, never over, overwork yourself. Yeah. But uh, if you're feeling like, oh, I can't think of anything take it easy yeah or work on something else mm-hmm. uh, try something else play video games <laughs> yeah get inspired by something mm-hmm. and I often think that you are there's always something in your brain that you're being inspired by you're just not recognizing it as inspiring you're like no that's kind of like normal there was just a dog walking down the street it's like it's sticking in your mind it's inspiring you make some art about it exactly it's easy it's already there it's like brain fodder <laughs> Whoops. Hmm. I think I'm gonna solve that this issue like this. Cool, I like that. Like this is how I'm gonna solve this visual issue. Put together. Put that down. Fixed. Uh oh. <laughs> Just realize this problem. Here. Needs to go all the way back. Yep. And since it's part of this group, it won't go behind the arm mm-hmm. unless I copy it all, delete it, and do Control D. Which means paste behind. Yep. There we go. He's looking really mean, real tough. Yeah, but he's smiling. Yeah. He's ready for some mischief. <laughs> Uh, Siraj says, Mark's actual speed of one art per minute. Mark per minute. <laughs> MP, MPM. All right, chat, we've got about 10 more minutes until we're going to be giving away this lovely illustrator pillow. Of course, not this one exactly. I know we make that joke like every single stream, but it's funny every time. Uh, we're going to be giving this away. All you have to do is be logged in to Behance. Go to be.net slash live. That's where we are right now. If you're watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance so you can be a part of this giveaway and so that we can see what you're chatting about. Uh, Then Adobe is going to run a magical little piece of script that will pick a random person who has participated in chat. That's why we need you to log in and say something and you can be the winner. 
of that pillow. After we do the giveaway, we will look at some of these submissions that you have all been submitting for the challenge. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the challenge tab at be.net slash live. We want you to create a Chinese uh, New Year invitation. So we have a template for you that would, we would love for you to use. Got about 40 minutes left to get those done. And if yours was submitted last stream and they didn't show it, we will show it during this one. I'm excited to see everyone's work. I'm and already looking at really them. Fun. They're very cute. Uh, Nadia, no, it's not happening now. 10 more minutes until the giveaway. Gary says, Mark's rate of work is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen anyone work so quickly and decisively <laughs> to create something so awesome. I think that this, the decisive aspect is what's really impressive to me. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, here we go. Gonna make this guy. And this is another example of you using the pen tool. Yeah. Which you don't usually use. I'm gonna use it for his hands because I feel like giving him like really spiky, Ooh. weird fingers. Mm -hmm. So the pen tool I kind of use whenever I'm feeling like I need to make some kind of weird shape that yeah. isn't, it's gonna be just harder to use other shapes to make it. Build it, yep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Aaron says, I really enjoy watching how you use Illustrator because he uses it so differently. How do you use it? Or Aaron, if that's your name. Aaron, how do you use Illustrator? Garen says, Mark's been killing it. <laughs> killing the game. Siraj says, a skull ring would be really cool on his hand. Oh, that would be. Mm -hmm. You guys have great ideas. Right, keep them coming. <laughs> Love it. Doesn't mean it's going to use them, but I like hearing them. If I don't use them, feel free to use them. Yeah. <laughs> Chat, if you're done with your Chinese New Year uh, challenge submission, you should create a little creature. We would love to see it. But make sure you work on your challenge first, because that could win you a free year of Creative Cloud. Oh, Adobe Live, did you recommend using a skull ring earlier? Oh, uh, just rings. All the rings, kiss the rings. All right, let's do a, let's do a ring then. Hey, he's doing it. Uh, let's see. Bring back the yellow. Nice. Oh, from his other bling. Yep. Very cool. Uh, Steven says, hi, longtime Adobe fanatic, first time caller. What's up, Steven? <laughs> Thank you so much for actually chatting and saying something. Appreciate it. Uh, he's been trying to get better at character design on Illustrator lately, and watching Mark's workflow is awesome. Such mind-blowing character design. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Steven, you're in the right place at the right time, my friend. <laughs> this is gold, literally. All right, Aralija, see you later. Get a good night's sleep. Um, let's see, we're, we're making a skull, right? Yes. Let me get all these wacky blue colors in. Bring it all back down here. See how you build this bad boy. Miriam says, them details. <laughs> They're the good things. So since the uh, skull is going to be really small, I don't want to use a lot of contrast. Mm -hmm. Because if I did, then it would be really noticeable. Right. What is that little thing? Yeah. Do you have any other tips for like when to add contrast and when not to? Um. Hmm. 
I guess you use a lot of contrast in, in like the overall face of the character yeah. and maybe wherever the focus you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and whatever uh, just feels right, you know? I guess that's like really different from character to character. <laughs> I was gonna say, Mark's all about just what feels right. I'm just gonna make what I want. It's a natural. <laughs> but that makes sense, totally. And I think always considering that like pretty much every design decision that you make is going to affect how the viewer is going to look mm -hmm. at your work. So be like, oh, is this adding too much contrast in a certain area just by changing the color or the angularity or what have you? Just staying present in your workflow is important. There we go. Skull like mood ring, I guess. It happened. How are you feeling? <laughs> Real BA today. Feeling dangerous. Yeah. Mood danger. <laughs> That's awesome. Not was I was not what I was expecting either. I thought you would just do like a big chunky skull. It's like, no, it's like inlaid nicely. It's very classy. So now gonna duplicate the arm. Bring it on over to the other side. Delete that part. So when you do that, do you have to make sure that the rectangle below is perfectly centered? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, or else it's gonna reflect on however wide and wherever the uh, rectangle is. Right. So it'll just like flip at those endpoints. Right, so how do you make sure the rectangle is centered? Oh, I draw it, mm -hmm. make sure it's highlighted, and then the transform menu bar, you have your X coordinate. Gotcha. And since I'm working on a six by six, I just hit three and it's centered. There you go, knowing your uh, parameters is really important. What kind of canvas that you're working on. Bam, two arms, right, Nadia? So I'm gonna true. get rid of the ring on this side. And I'm gonna change up the arm just a little bit. Cool. Uh, Mark is wondering about, or not Mark, you're Mark. Mike is wondering <laughs> about the color palettes in your uh, loot mm -hmm. projects and is wondering how you got them to be co so cohesive. They all work together really nicely. Was that something that you had laid out previously, or do you just always kind of use uh, similar I th colors? I think I just always use similar colors. Mm -hmm. And really, I uh, think it's because I'm working on the same background color. I tried to use okay. this, uh, I'll bring it up, the values. Uh, but I really like this background color. I'm using 81, 69, 50, 80. And it's got like a little bit of a bluish tint. It does. And I just prefer that over using straight up black. Because I feel like that is really dull and kind of takes out the saturation. Right. I mean, there's always a proper time to use black, like mm -hmm. a poster if you want something really graphic and mm -hmm. punchy. But for what I'm doing, not so much. Cool. Wait, this is the homunculus from Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. We just finished rewatching that. Oh, did you see the live action movie? started it and I was like I don't have <laughs> the energy for this right now <laughs> did you watch it yeah how was it it was a movie it was a movie <laughs> so chat if you don't know Full Metal Alchemist is an anime manga but anime and did you just... like the uh, original better or Brotherhood Brotherhood is my favorite oh do you like the original I think it's creepier. Really? I feel the, the ending opposite. is so creepy. Well, yeah, they definitely <laughs> do have different endings. Um, but anywho, chat, it's a really awesome and well-loved story. They've come out with two different versions of it, the original and then Brotherhood, which was later, a little bit of a revamp, and then they just came out with a live action version. And that's even different than the uh, other two versions too. Oh, really? It's a different story? Mm, slightly. Gotcha. Different retelling. Gotcha. It makes sense. It is a movie versus like 50 episodes or whatever. But uh, Mark doesn't recommend it, so don't watch it. <laughs> I don't recommend a lot of movies. Okay, there you go. Not a movie fan. Uh, Not a bad movie fan. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Uh, Yusuf says Full Metal Alchemist for the win. Yes, totally agree. That's Our, another great thing about the art world. A lot of anime fans. Heck yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's what got me into making art as Same a wee here. child. Really, what was your like, your catalyst? Uh, well, 
Dragon Ball Z was definitely up there, mm -hmm. but I would have to say Gundam. Oh yeah, did we talk about this yesterday? I you were think talking so. about Toonami and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like First Gundam. Gundam series I think I saw was Eighth MS Team, and I thought that was so cool. Yeah, just the mech was like calling your name. Oh yeah. That makes sense. And it didn't feel like one of those like superhero kind of shows too. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool right. too. Right. It's like normal people using powerful tools. Yeah. In space. <laughs> I think that's what was so exciting about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adobe Live says original Dragon Ball was so epic. Agreed. Very true. So many arcs, so many time jumps. Um, personally, growing up, I like hated mech. It just like was not my aesthetic. Uh -oh. <laughs> I really liked like the pretty, you know, tech, like classically girly things. Although I watched Dragon Ball too. But now we just started watching a mech show on Netflix, and I forget what it's called. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, Mer. Kuro Mukuro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black Corpse. That is really good. Heard about it. It's beautiful. And the story actually has like depth, which is Ooh. nice. All right. Enough anime talk. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> we are going to do a giveaway. How does that sound? Does that make up for the fangirling and fanboying over here? Uh, chat, make sure that you're signed in on Behance because we are going to give away this pillow. What's up, pillow? So yesterday we gave away a Photoshop pillow. Today we are giving away an Adobe Illustrator pillow. This is the little icon that bops up and down on the bottom of your screen if you have a Mac, then turns into the beautiful program of Illustrator. So you could be the winner of this. All you need to do is be logged in on Behance. If you don't have an account, make one really quick and say something in chat. That is how we're gonna pick a random winner. Adobe Live will run some magic scripts, pick a random winner, and we will announce that name in just a minute. So let's get the chat hype going. That's how you win. Kelly says, I'm logged in. Awesome, Kelly, you are entered. Good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Noelle says, that pillow is a designer's dream. Oh yeah. I agree, and they're made in America. They're very squishy. That's good. Comfy, it's compact, so you could actually like take it with you if you needed to. Put it on your couch, on your chair, nice accent piece. All right, chat. You're being nice and talkative. I love it. I wonder who's going to win. I know. Vector pillow. All righty, so we have a name. It is appearing before our very eyes. Dun, 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 dun. Would you like Should to read I? the name? Yes, please. All right. Ember Navarro. Ember, you are the winner. I just saw your name very in chat. Lucky. So congratulations and thanks for being here. I haven't seen your name very often. So lucky you. Congratulations. Adobe Live will be in contact with you via your Behance messages. So be on the lookout for that. Congrats. <laughs> Hiroki's like, oh man, I wish I was the winner. You and me both, Hiroki. And usually at this time, we like to look at the submissions that have come in so far. Does that sound okay to you? Sounds good to me. All right, let's do this. So the first couple submissions will be <laughs> submissions that were shown or submitted last stream that didn't get shown. If you are just tuning in, we have a challenge for you. Every day it's different. Today's challenge is to create a Chinese New Year, Year of the Earth Dog invitation. So we've provided a template for you to use and these are the submissions so far. Don't fret, we aren't picking a winner yet. You have 30 more minutes or 25 more minutes to get those in. So here's a little, what are these called? What are these Sharpays? Chow Chows? I don't know, dog breeds. Wrinkly man, <laughs> cute little wrinkle boy. Very cute. And maybe we can say um, one thing you like and one thing they could work on. I really like the color palette. Mm -hmm. I think you can play around a little bit more with the line weight. Gotcha, I agree. Um, that's just a really nice, like, picture of a dog. <laughs> it's a uh, nice picture It's got of a, li a lot of movement to it. It does. It feels alive. Yeah, but I think the line weight tip will give it even more movement. Mm -hmm. Since these lines are overlapping each other, they'll definitely have different widths, like things that are closer to you might be a little thicker than things that are further away. It'll definitely help sell the image. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Britt. Oh, wow. <laughs> really like the color palette. Yes, it's definitely speaking your language, isn't it? I like the shapes that you're using. Mm -hmm. This is really fun. Yeah, 
It was a good choice. Yeah, it looks like they might have used Photoshop Sketch, judging mm -hmm. by this um, brush they used, but maybe Photoshop too. I like the texture. Yeah. It's uh, at times a little distracting. Gotcha. But I feel like if you just tighten it up a little bit, uh, it would be really nice. Cool. Where do you think it's distracting? Over by the ear. Here? Yeah, that color is a little too desaturated. Right. But other than that, there's a just very minimal spots. Right, right. And I like how you used a dark kind of purpley tone for the shadows. Mm -hmm. Keeps it alive for sure. So nice job. Great submission. This is really oh, pretty this is cool. clever. Yeah. <laughs> I, Ryan showing you how to make your dog. Ooh. I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Uh I think the pattern, though, is a little distracting. Oh, okay. If you, if you use a little bit less contrast, it would work a little bit better. I agree. I agree. There's a texture in the background and then a pattern on top mm -hmm. within this kind of intricate origami shape, so that definitely makes sense. You should just make a polka dots, and then Mark will pick it. Just I'll kidding. print it out and make one. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Nice job, Brian. Just find Natalia. Cool. This almost looks like a little deer. Cute a little, little bit, yeah. Yeah, but very obviously a dog. Cool, what do you think? I really enjoy it. I think the dots on the flowers, if you can make them a little bit bigger mm -hmm. on the bigger flowers, and you can just take them out on the smaller ones. Yeah, not needed. And you're getting a little bit of a tangent on some of them. Which I think if you just break it out of the white shape, that would be good too. Yeah, definitely. So this kind of goes back to um, taking contrast out when an, something is really small, like he did on the skull ring. Mm -hmm. So like here, there's a bunch of contrast on these tiny little lines. That's just a little bit confusing and it doesn't read right away. So just get rid of them. Easy as that. <laughs> this is by Crystal, little dumpling dog. Very cool. Yes, it even has little mandarins or satsumas mm -hmm. down there. Cool, what do you think? I really like it, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of character to it and it would make a great card. I agree. I think the yellow is a little too much, though. Oh. Maybe bring it into a little bit of a tan. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not really anywhere else mm -hmm. either. Maybe up there. And I get that, like, the, the red and gold. Yeah. It's definitely the colors that you want to go for, but it looks a little distracting here, but I appreciate this little kind of tablecloth yeah. pattern, and you've got pattern in here also. Pa oh, I barely saw it. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so great job. Let's see who this was by. I forget. Crystal. Nice job, Crystal. This is by Richa. Ooh. Sounds like a little kitsune dog. <laughs> nice. Cute. Cool glow down here. Mm -hmm. What you think? I like the composition. Mm -hmm. You can bring down the type a little bit, and right. the moon you can bring in a little bit. It's just on that tangent. Right. Or you can bring it out, yeah. whatever you feel like. Go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Right now it's just on the cusp. Yeah, and I think that the parasol and the moon are like the same size, or they have the same hierarchy to me. Like yeah. they're two assets, same size, don't know which one to look at first. You can even make the moon just a solid color yellow, mm -hmm. like a golden yellow. Yeah, right, these details are nice, but maybe detract yeah. from what's going on here. Nice job, Richa. This is by Siraj. Ooh. Cute doggo, doing a good trick. Very cool. Mm -hmm. This one's really nice too. I like the uh, use of the white outline to bring it in with the white shapes mm -hmm. on the right. It gives a little bit of a glowing feel without actually yeah, making it glow. Makes it feel like it's cohesive too. Mm -hmm. I like that. I can't tell if this is a lantern and a moon, like a little hybrid, but if so, mm -hmm. that's pretty sweet. Cool. Nice job, Siraj. This is another <laughs> by Siraj. Oh, this one's really cute. I mm -hmm. like this. He's comfy boy. They're using the same little moon lantern. Cool, cool. Nice job. This is cool. This is by Brian. Oh, oh, I love seeing little dogs in sweaters. Who doesn't? <laughs> nice. So what do you think? I really love the shapes. I like how like it's very simple. Mm -hmm. I just wish the same shape language was brought into the bone. Because yep. right now they feel like they're different. Yeah. That was my exact thought. Mm -hmm. So this is very... Uh, curvilinear and round, but this is all very angular, although it does have a bit of a rounded corner. Oh, it does? Oh. Very slight, but okay. still, m this is much more round. So you could just mm -hmm. make these the same kind of edge as this. Boom, there you go, problem solved. All right, this is by oh. John. Ooh, that Scary, dog. I know. <laughs> or he's a delivery dog, he's delivering you your invitation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool, what do you think? 
I think it was really bold to break it out of the frame and oh, yeah. kind of make the frame part of the illustration. Yeah, nice job, John. I thought that was a really clever idea. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe work on the mouth a little bit, kind of give it a little bit more depth, maybe yeah. overlap the teeth on top of the frame. Mm -hmm. Maybe make the, you can even subtract some of the teeth, make them a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And then the viewer will just have the idea, like they'll see it yeah. and they'll, their mind will register it as right. their mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I noticed there's a little bit of a stroke mm -hmm. on some of these shapes. I don't think oh. you really need. Um, on top of this red, these will show up just fine without a mm -hmm. stroke. I think at the bottom by the top of the teeth, you can make that stroke a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. And that would yeah. bring it out. Uh, but the but uh, yeah around the ears I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use the stroke just in the way that you can use line width to bring mm -hmm. things forward and move things back. But nice job, that was John. Cool. This is by Christopher. Ooh. Nice texture. I'm digging it. I mm -hmm. like the uh, was it Chinese character in behind yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I think if you made the line width a little bit thicker, that would bring out the dog a little bit more. For the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I know. I think these lines are really nice and they make a really convincing little dog shape. Mm -hmm. So if you make them a little more bold, that'd be great. Yeah. And I think this is a nice use of gradient. I think gradients can be used a little heavy, heavy handedly sometimes, but this is really nice. It's subtle. Yeah. Yep. It's like a wash of color. Nice job. Great texture. Christopher. Ooh. It's by Juan Camilo. Oh, I like this. Clever idea of making the dog part of the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, the ears. I'm not sure if it works there. I yeah. think if you made them look a little bit more like mountains, that would be really helpful. Hey, that's cool. But all together, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a tough visual problem to solve here because you have mountains and you want this to look like the sky. So the like, nose is really well done. I yeah. like that part. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and this is almost like the bridge that brings, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe. But this is cool. This looks like a movie poster to me. Yeah. It's a great job. Ooh. Kung Fu Dog! <laughs> He's serious. Very cool. Yeah. I like how you're using the color very loosely. Mm -hmm. And it has a nice quality to it. And kind of bleeding the same color of the light into the dog. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. Yeah. Keeping it simple. Yeah, it keeps things very gestural, but also acts as rim light, which mm -hmm. adds a little glow to the image. Very so, cool. So nice job, everyone. This is going to be a tough... <laughs> decision already. I'll curate this list down. We'll look at more submissions when the deadline hits, which is in about 15 minutes. So make sure you're still working if you haven't submitted yet. And you must submit before the deadline because this is the last stream of the day. And tomorrow the challenge will be totally different. So get those submissions in. You can do it. I believe in you. So I kind of took a break from the character and I felt like, you know what? I'm going to give him a dog. Yes. I'm waiting for this all oh, stream. <laughs> Did you decide what kind of dog it would be? Uh, I'm not <laughs> too familiar with dog breeds. I know the Shiba Inu. Yep. Uh, my favorite, Corgi. Cute. Um, that's pretty much it. Could be either of those. Would be awesome. What do you think, chat? What would you recommend? And describe it physically, because Mark doesn't know what yeah, words Yeah, you can name are. a dog, I, I won't know what it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Man, this is going to be a tough decision for you. Uh, I didn't mention it while we were looking at those, but the winner of the challenge today will win a free year of Creative Cloud. Ooh. So that is the prize. So maybe this will just be a generic dog, generic brand dog. Gary says a Boston Terrier would suit this little ter character. I agree. So that's like the little black and white dog that's really popular right now. Show you. This little guy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I want like five of them. Please. They're sweet little guys. <laughs> Although there's one that lives in our neighborhood and he always barks real loud at our dog. Mm. And our dog's just sad about it. So like, why are you yelling at me, man? <laughs> Didn't do anything. Gonna do a Boston Terrier then. Yeah, sweet. Bring in the snout a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I 
<laughs> Daniel says, do you know Poochie, the dog from the Simpsons cartoon that Homer did the voice of? Is that the cool no. dog? Poochie? Poochie. This, hey, does he ride the skateboard? Let's see. Yeah, it's Poochie. <laughs> this is Poochie, everybody. Very and he's cool. the coolest. And doesn't Bart get mad because his dad's now like a cool character? He's like, you're not cool, dad. <laughs> Calabunga. Oh, John says, thank you, everyone. I'm so honored to even be in this chat. Thank you for being here, John. It's really great to have you. So the dog character, I'm just gonna kind of keep him a little bit simple. That way he doesn't distract too much from the character. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. And like I said, this is the last stream of the day and this is our second day of the week for our stream. So tomorrow is the last day of the week of yeah. our event. I can't believe it went by so quickly. Right? I know. I, like I just got here. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll just be flying back out, jet setting back out. So tomorrow we've got Logan coming up at 9 a.m. with Ari. At 11, you'll have me back with Kirk. At 1, Lydia will be back with Ren this time. And then Mark's going to close out the day at 3 o'clock, hosted by yours truly. Uh, so make sure you get all your questions for Mark and all of the other guests in today or tomorrow. Also, make sure to follow them all on social so you can follow their creative journeys after they leave. And feel free to message me any questions you got. I'm happy to answer them. Heck yeah. Mark is a confirmed nice guy who will hopefully answer all your questions. But he will not know what breed your dog is. No idea. Don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. He's got the little drooly tongue. <laughs> uh, Natty says, what happened to giving away socks? Yes, we used to give away lots of socks. I think we're giving it a bit of a break this week. Maybe uh, to keep the supply and demand going, make sure you still want them. So we're giving away Pillows. Keep a corner on the, the sock market. Yeah, trying to. <laughs> and then tomorrow, the giveaway is going to be totally different. Any idea what it's going to be, chat? Let us know. Bruno says, thank you, Adobe Live, for the initiative. These lives bring us closer to the artists. Working while watching you is like drawing with a friend. <laughs> Bruno, it's because you are drawing with a friend. It's not just like it, it is. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We really love putting on these uh, events for all of you. Like I said, we're here every week. Make sure you are subscribed here on Behance so you know what's going on and when. You can click on the schedule tab and that will let you know a little bit in advance what's coming up in the future. So like I said, next week we've got more illustration focusing on mobile illustration. So using uh, mobile devices and Adobe mobile apps to build beautiful illustrations. And not only that, but taking the work that you do in the mobile apps onto the desktop. So how does uh, Photoshop Sketch, the mobile app, and Photoshop CC, the desktop app, how do they play together? What are the cool things you can do? Hint, hint, there's a lot of cool things you can do. I'm excited to see that. So I want to know if I can just get a tablet and sketch right on there. Oh, heck yeah. I know a lot of my friends do that. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm like kicking around the idea of getting an iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'd be so nice, but money. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? True, that is life. <laughs> uh, Nancy wants to know, does this character have a name? Have you named this character yet? Up to you guys. Ooh, chat interaction time. Do something really extravagant, like yes. something, something the third. Ooh, it's like really, yeah. <laughs> Let's get deep in this character naming. What's his mythology? What's his story? Who is his great grandfather? <laughs> What's his favorite food? Yeah, that too. Pasta, because it's Mark's favorite. That's the best. <laughs> Hector says Chad. His name's Chad. 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 
That's probably because whenever I say chat, talking to the chat, they think I'm saying Chad. Ah, okay. What's up, Chad? <laughs> Chad. Pierre Leroc. Ooh, Ooh, French. Little Frenchman. <laughs> uh, Noel says, oh, okay, uh -oh. it's a mouthful. Gavius Finkeldink, the fourth, will do. <laughs> it's like, this will do. Uh, Kat says, I'm using Adobe Sketch, which is a mobile app, on my cell phone right now while listening. We'll post in a little while. Awesome, Kat. That's awesome. Do you use a stylus when you are using your phone or are you just using your finger? Doggler. Doggler is his name. <laughs> Doggler. Doggler. That's funny. Could do a random name generator. The name. But let's let's bump it up a notch and do random fantasy name. Ooh. Do you guys want to give him like a dagger or something? I don't know. Okay, what kind of weapon? What kind of weapon, y'all? Uh, we're gonna go for 20th century names. No, Next I don't like list, that. the 23rd. Ooh. <laughs> The 23rd, there have been many, many of them. <laughs> long line, very long line. <laughs> 23rd, to be exact. All right, we've got Nova Pathfinder. Ooh. Heat, dare. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a crazy name. We've got the Ritual Butcher. Oh, that sounds really scary. The Full Moon Slayer. Yikes. He is serious. Ooh, Siraj says Knuckles. We could put Knuckles in there somehow. Ooh, like Brass Knuckles? Or like his name. Oh, his like name. from Sonic okay. the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Flynn Gitterin. Harrison Steven. That's not a cool name at all. Because Stephen in chat, who is a cool name, says, mm. love the minimal design. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's very detailed, but very flat, simple. All right. I'm going to give this guy some really nice boots. They're going to be gold spiked Doc Martens? Not quite. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Adobe Live says, he looks like a Mikey. A hey, Mikey. Mikey. Mikey the Bone Breaker. Ooh, <laughs> so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Marie says, Howler the Space Hound for the doggo. Chat, you've got about approximately five minutes left to get your submissions in for today's challenge. If you are just tuning in, don't know what the challenge is, go to the challenge tab at be.net slash live. Might not be enough time to start now, but we will have a different challenge for you tomorrow, uh, inspired by something about this week's creations. Ooh. Richa says Chomper. That's a good name. That's a good name. Solid name. Yeah. Uh, Hiroki is wondering more about how you create your shadows. Uh, he noticed that you used minus front under the Pathfinder or something like that. Yeah, so I use a lot of the shape modes on Pathfinder, and I kind of just divide the overall shape into different sections. So I have, and it kind of depends on how I'm going to build it or what's the easiest way to build it. So sometimes I subtract, sometimes, uh, like sometimes the shadow is the subtracted part, and sometimes the light is the sh uh, subtracted part. So for like this one, the light is the subtracted part. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hope that helps Hiroki. Thomas says, just submitted. Yeah, Thomas, I got yours open on my screen right now. So no worries. We have received it. This reminds me of A Night in the Woods, the mm -hmm. video game. This character. Oh, yeah. Like the overall shape. Yeah. 
And like, especially, especially the shoes shape for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah, that looks like a night in the woods. <laughs> so you're gonna do your cool reflection mm -hmm. thing again. Micah also just submitted. Awesome, Micah. Thanks for doing that. Got five minutes left. Ooh, tons are coming in right at the last minute. Ooh, oh boy. Danielle says you need some spike, some spikes on those boots. Kind of like your Doc Martens that you're talking about. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. All right. Uh, do we want to have like spiky bottoms or spikes Ooh. on top? Perfect for kicking people. Perfect for stomping on people. Yeah, being a stomp stomp. <laughs> what do you think, chat? Spikes on top, spikes on the bottom, spikes all over. Or maybe get rid of his legs altogether and he just has peg legs. And <laughs> just two giant spikes. <laughs> Watch out. Bruno says, it's too late for me to submit something, but tomorrow I'll be doing something for sure. Awesome, Bruno. Can't wait to see. Cool, cool, cool. Noel says, spikes inside. That's Ouch. cruel, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Martin and Spikes the dog. That's nice, Anaga. Rich says Spikes on the bottom would be good. I got them on the bottom. Yeah, kind of like little uh, uh, cleats. Let's give them a little buckle, too. Cool. Karen wants Louboutin Spikes. Those are some crazy shoes. Yeah, oh. I noticed there was a Alexander McQueen store nearby oh. Market Street. Might go check it out just to look at things. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> serious. Some serious stuff going on in that store. <laughs> um, Anna says, don't forget to save. Oh, I won't. <laughs> oh, I won't. Not till it's too late. I haven't had too many issues with Illustrator crashing. I haven't either. It like rarely does. <laughs> I've gotten something wood. I don't know if this table is wood. I'm going to assume it is. And we got nice little buckles. And you know what? Since he is a rogue type, he would definitely have patches. He's been through uh, some tough stuff. Mm -hmm. But he keeps wearing the same pants. Yeah. <laughs> Once you find a pair you like, you just kind of stick with them. True. Yeah, Dustin says, Illustrator will save your work even if it does crash. Yep, if you have autosave turned on, and make sure you do, mm -hmm. it'll be saved. For the most part. Murray says, these are his lucky drawers. <laughs> yep, he can't get rid of them. Uh, Steven is wondering, how did you duplicate the spikes? You probably just held Command um, D? Yeah, pretty much. I just copied it, uh, Control C, Control F, Control D. Well, moved it over then Control D. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chat, one more minute until the deadline to get your submissions in. We've had some really awesome ones come in here right in the last couple minutes. We'll look through them again, give some feedback, because I think that's pretty helpful and fun. Mm -hmm. Gives you your spotlight. So I'll just add a little bit of red and yellow just to mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And now to finish up the dog. I wasn't expecting that dog to be so big. It's like a I, bear. I don't know what it is, but I just love big animals. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, back to anime, if you've seen Inuyasha. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Most death. There's, uh, the big uh, fox demon. Mm -hmm. Or cat demon, I forgot. I think it's a cat. <laughs> yeah, the demon tribe. Hey, oh, you mean Kilala? Yeah, yeah. Or Ki Ra Ra. That was another show I watched when I was really young. Me too. That was one of my OGs. <laughs> Staying yes. up at like two in the morning. Yep. When I was like in middle school. Yep. Shouldn't have done that. Well, probably irresponsible of me. Look at you now. For me, it was like 
I would catch it randomly, and I always thought it was an accident that it was on TV. I'm like, what is this show, and why is it always on super <laughs> late at night? So I would always like randomly turn on the TV. I'm like, is that weird demon show on again? <laughs> Usually it was. Gave me weird dreams, but it's all right. Denise says, I loved Inuyasha. Yes. I tried to start watching it. I think it was like last year. Rewatching mm -hmm. it, and as a adult, it was a different experience. Yeah, going back to the old shows is, yeah, it's a uh, hit or miss. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like at that time when I was first watching it, I like knew nothing about mm -hmm. anime and even how to build a story. So I was like, this is amazing. And now that I look back, I'm like, oh man, this is kind of flat <laughs> sometimes. Still great at inspiration though. Heck yeah. All right, chat, that was the deadline for the challenge for today. Uh, if you're still working, unfortunately, that was the end of the challenge and tomorrow it'll be totally different, but uh, good luck on finishing it up and feel free to maybe tweet it and tag or hashtag Adobe Live uh, and you can share it with all your friends and your family. I'll make sure to get these all open and we can take a peek in just a minute. All right. And let's see, do you guys want to change the color of the dog? Ooh. I feel like something else, just to bring it out from the... Right, he's kind of lurking back there. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, I like that. Mm hmm So usually if I'm gonna, if I find one color I like, I'll just hit it okay. And recolor the artwork again, and just kind of drag and drop. Oh, interesting. Actually, that color I'm gonna keep the same. That's part of the nose. Keep that. Wow, I didn't know the drag and drop and recolor artwork worked this way. It's mm -hmm. cool. Oh, that was his nose. <laughs> uh oh, okay. I, I really like this greeny bluey color, but I feel like it, there's a little bit of a contrast issue with His your jacket? character's jacket. Yeah. Hmm. But it's so cool. Ooh, it looks like a ghost dog. <laughs> Ooh. What if I made him red? Yeah, red would be good. That's true. Wouldn't mind some red. All right, Daniel. Daniel. Danielle. See you later and sleep well. Thank you for being here. That's the nose. Let's see. Yeah, the only bad thing I don't really like about recolor artwork, it doesn't tell you exactly what you're highlighting. Right. Yeah, it should. But, I mean, like, which colors? Like, it'll tell you which colors, but you don't know. You don't which. see the outline. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Adobe, you hear that? Hello. I know you're here. <laughs> People are saying orange, light purple, purple or orange. Invert the tongue and the body, make the dog pink. All great Good ideas. Dog. That dog has a thousand mile stare. What do you see, dog? He sees a squirrel and he is just so happy. He must go. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, Raji, you're wondering how do you curve the rectangle? You use the live corners. So if you use the direct select tool, click on your shape, you should see some little handles that are like little circles mm -hmm. and you can curve them up. All right, we're looking good. I'm happy. Yeah, you're like, I did a good thing. <laughs> Proud. Give him a nice collar. Uh, let's see. I want to make it lime green. Ooh. Also, if things are in a group, you can do the direct select, and then you're just kind of editing just that one shape. Gotcha. So it's great for selecting one thing mm -hmm. out of a lot. If you want to just change the color real quick. Right. Right. You could go into isolation mode, or mm -hmm. if that's what it's called, um, but that takes a couple extra clicks. Not really necessary all the time. So yeah, anything to like streamline the process is great. Because mm -hmm. then you can work faster, get things done faster, and it's just good practice. Yeah, agreed. What's up, Daiichi? Thank you for joining. And whenever you're ready, Mark, we can look at some of these new submissions. All right. All right, let's do this. So we've got Julie's submission. 
Oh, wow. Very somber. I really like this Emotional. one. Emotional. Right. Very readable silhouettes, so that's great. Mm -hmm. And I like that the background has a little bit of texture yeah. and visibility to it. Really nice. Cool. What do you think she could work on? I think if you bring down the contrast between the, uh, I'm guessing the light source up top and mm -hmm. the rest of the background. Gotcha. That would really help because it's kind of battling a little bit. Okay. With the uh, the silhouettes at the bottom. I see. So mm -hmm. do you want this to have more contrast or less? Less contrast. Go less. Gotcha. Yeah. Or maybe you have a more gradual gradient mm -hmm. going from the background color to the light source. Yeah. That would be good. Right. I feel like this jump to this jump is like a little stark. Mm. But this is nice because you want the most contrast to be here. So yep. Nice job, Julie. <laughs> Merrick, one of our previous winners. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah, he said he was also inspired by A Night in the Woods. I can tell. Mm -hmm. mm. All really right, cool. what do you like? What could they work on next time? Really like the color, mm -hmm. and I really like the character. I think the red sweater, though, you can probably change the color, make it darker, make it a little bit lighter, because mm -hmm. it's getting lost in the background. Gotcha. And I see this also the orange. at the bottom. Does this look red to you? Uh, on that screen? Oh, on yeah. that screen, yeah. I was like, oh, whoa, who's wrong here? <laughs> but yeah, it definitely looks red up there. <laughs> cool, and sorry, what did you say about the typeface? And the typeface at the bottom, well, on the screen over there, I barely see it, but over here, right. it, yeah, you can see it. Maybe you can darken it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is a little bit of a battle here. Mm -hmm. Vibrating just a bit, but nice job, Merrick. Ooh. This is by Ionit or Lonit. Ooh. Very year, much happy. <laughs> doge. <laughs> Such a doge. Evil cool, doge. Cool. Yeah. What do you like? What can they work on? Uh, I would work on the typography. Oh, ah, okay. Because that's really a little dis distracting, but I like you mean the this one? Yeah. Gotcha. But I like the overall uh, shape and the drawing of the dog. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's breaking the border a little bit. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a tangent here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I kind of understand the type. Like it's it's the classic meme oh, doge, okay. <laughs> very kind of off kilter and not where you would expect it. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe it could be just toned, like tightened up a little bit. Let's make it a little less distracting. Very cool, nice job. Ooh. Mood dog. This is also like a little space rocketeer dog. Very Going to cool. the moon for Lunar New Year. <laughs> nice, what do you think? I really like the character. Mm -hmm. And I like that you're playing around with the border where he's in, he's behind it and he's also in front yeah, of it. Yeah, breaking it. Um, I think if you added a gradient to him at the bottom, oh. that would really tie it in together a little bit more. Gotcha. Maybe make the stars a little bit bigger and have a little bit more contrast. Gotcha. Just brighten them up ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a contrast issue throughout the whole thing. And since it is almost monochromatic, it might be worth it to just do totally black and white first and then figure out where you want your lightest values, where you want your darkest values. Because right now my eye's going straight here. Yeah. And I don't, maybe that's what you want, but I would think maybe you'd want to go up here. All right, nice job. Ooh. Tetsuya. So this is the person who had the cool like levitating rocks mm -hmm. yesterday. Very cool. Same artist, different day. Really so like the cute. color palette. Mm -hmm. And the moon is really nicely done too. Right. I like the uh, inlays there. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, but the, the tones and the values aren't too different. So there's not too much contrast here mm -hmm. that it's moving your eyes away from these pieces, which is... They're nice little details that you just notice. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, nice yeah. job. So maybe something that they could work on next time? Um, maybe doing slightly different faces for the smaller dogs. Yeah, that'd be cute. Yeah, have them just give them a little bit more personality. Because mm -hmm. all together, this is really nice. Yeah, a little bit of a tangent right here. Mm -hmm. And this little ear coming off the edge. Other than that, that's kind of a nitpick. <laughs> all right, Lindsay, also one of our previous winners. Very cool. Look <laughs> at this little grumpy boy. <laughs> love it. I really love the kind of naive hand that this is done in. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Kind of wish some of that like texture was brought back into the border as well. Ah. That would be nice. Yeah, it seems like there's a little bit of texture, but it's not as paint painterly or washy mm -hmm. as these are. Really if you brought nice. that in, it would really make it a little bit more 
cohesive. Yeah, maybe some more highs and lows in that frame. Nice job, Lindsay, also in San Francisco. Nice, we're oh. neighbors. This is by Thomas. <laughs> he said that he just got the sketch done, but to get the point across, this is what he has. It's a good sketch. Mm -hmm. It's super you, cute. You got a good base to work from. Uh, really nice. Yeah. Maybe good. tuck in the back leg a little bit. Gotcha. And try to show the other back leg. Yeah, if somewhere. If he has one. <laughs> if he has one, yeah, I don't want to assume. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not, but I think ob the obvious answer is just finish it. Mm -hmm. but really nice start, Thomas. Very good. Mm -hmm. It's by Lauren E. Ooh, the faceless dog. <laughs> Looking at the moon. Uh, I think you put a little too many hairs ah, I see. on the face. Mm -hmm. I think you can simplify that a little bit more, mm -hmm. and it would help with the overall silhouette. And you might want to throw in some eyes as well. Yeah, I think you might be looking away. Oh, you could be. Possibly, maybe not. Maybe you could just be a shadow dog. Mm -hmm. uh, but I totally agree with simplifying this a little bit, like drawing a larger shape that represents a bunch of hair mm -hmm. coming together. Nice. Also don't know, this is kind of similar to other moons we've seen if these strokes mm -hmm. are totally necessary or if maybe you could build them into more crescent shaped shadows and less of just an all around ring. Yeah. Nice job, Lauren. I like the stroke around the text though. This is by Micah. <laughs> this is trying to appeal to Mark's polka dots. I love polka dots. He's being honest about it. <laughs> Added a little polka dot handkerchief. I like the uh, the character. Mm -hmm. It's a very funny looking dog. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell he, he is hungry. He is. He's I ready. like the drooling and I like the color palette, the like bluish color. It's similar to the color palette you just used. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, and I think this is a good example on not adding too much detail on mm -hmm. the moon. Um, yeah, pretty simple, but it gets the point across. You know yeah. it's the moon. <laughs> so nice job, Micah. Thanks for submitting. <laughs> this is a cool little guy. This is by, I think, Very Luis. Cool. Mm -hmm. I love this little chill dude. <laughs> so interesting. Like a dragon dog. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Anything that you like and would work on next time? Uh, I, I like the, the idea, the concept of the dog, like giving him wings, mm -hmm. giving him stripes, makes him look a lot more fierce. <laughs> fierce. <laughs> I would maybe add a little bit to the background. Okay. Like a vignette almost, maybe throw in a, like a cloud or some kind of small detail that mm -hmm. would give it space. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's easy and nice to just throw your illustration on a background, but it's always going that extra mile kind of making it have some sort of reference point in space. Mm -hmm. But I really love this style. I think it's pretty one of a kind. Haven't seen that in a while. All right, new year, new <laughs> me. What's up, doggy? This one's cool. I like the, the shape of this one. Mm -hmm. Are they using textures too? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of textures really nice. going on. This kind of looks like uh, the leg, or maybe that was last stream. There was one that had seven legs. Oh. Um, but it looks like the similar kind of texture and style. I think you can punch up the texture a bit, mm -hmm. give it a little bit more contrast, but altogether this is really solid. Yeah, nice. I like the, the typeface used in the mm -hmm. uh, necklace because it matches the style and the shape character of the rest of the design. It's nice and rounded, kind of thick, uh, with no serifs or anything. Mm -hmm. So nice job. Very cool. It's by Patricia. <laughs> Little Boston Terrier, it seems. Or maybe a little pity, who knows? <laughs> Cute little parasol. I like it. I, I like that the so the uh, the background shape, the circle, is affecting the border as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice touch. Yep. Uh, I think you can bring him in a little bit because he's just a little off center, it feels like. Yeah. The dog himself is centered, but mm -hmm. with the umbrella, the parasol, it, it's kind of shifting him to the left. Yeah, and you don't like that? I think you can bring them in a little bit more. Gotcha. Make it a little more balanced. And I mm -hmm. usually like when things are a little off-center because it adds some interest, but it's almost creating like an interesting little congested area right here that could maybe be solved a little bit mm -hmm. more. But really cute. And I think this is a good example of, while, although the background is very simple, uh, you created some sort of shape. To yeah, give it gives them somewhere to sit. Right. You can tell where the gravi gravity is mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. Definitely, so add some reference mm -hmm. to your image. Ooh. Yeah, nice and 
brushed style. I believe this is by cool. Michelle Day. Mm. Really cute. I like this one a lot. It's mm -hmm. solid. Yeah. <laughs> and although this is so painterly and kind of free-handed down here, it's still very tight and mm -hmm. um, looks finished. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say is to bring in some of that texture into the borders. Mm -hmm. Not too much, because you don't want to distract it from the the, do the, the dog in the center, mm -hmm. but just hints here and there. Yeah, I agree. And maybe throw this little texture behind the feet. Yeah. Or not. A little nitpick there. It's by Karat. Oh, this is a cute one, too. Yeah, little curly tails. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. What do you like? What can you work on? Um, I think you can make the stroke just ever so slightly thicker. Give it gotcha. a little bit more, I don't know, where to oomph. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure, but I can sort of tell, like, there's a stroke on the yellow shape. Yeah, right here. I'm not sure if you need that. Hmm. Or mm -hmm. if you want to do, like, a stroke outside of the circle, just kind of make a line around it. That right. would look really nice. A little more of a graphic element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have a point there with maybe playing more with the line width. You're already starting but you could really kind of show the velocity of these lines and how dynamic and graceful they are with making things like maybe a little bit thicker here, thinning out here, make it look like I was really done with like a sumi brush. Yeah. Yeah, nice job. So that's all of the submissions. I'm gonna curate down the list, hopefully give you around 10, maybe a little less to choose from. <laughs> and while I'm doing that, maybe you can talk about what you did today. Sure. And what you're gonna do tomorrow. So today I did like a really straightforward character design, kind of just throwing in a bunch of elements. Uh, and what I really tried to do was base the entire character using a very single shape and single shape language. Mm -hmm. So I started with circles. So most things here have a nice curve to them, either starting out with a circle or adding curve later on. Mm -hmm. And I tried to keep a very simplified uh, color palette, not using too many shades or tints, and try to keep something uh, almost like an analogous color palette here. So purples, greens, blues, and then I threw in a pink because purple and pink and blue look really nice together. They do, they work. And a little bit of a pattern right at the neck just to bring the eye in a little bit more. So, awesome. Yeah. And I gave him a dog because challenge. Yeah, Chinese New Year. <laughs> you got dogs on your jackets. Yeah. Cool. And then what do you think we're going to be working on tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm going to do an environment. I think Ooh. I'm going to do some sort of cafe. Oh, cool. Uh, Any inspiration for that? I'm just going to look around San Francisco, gotcha. see the architectural stuff. Mm -hmm. I like all the bay windows, so I might throw that in too. Hey, sweet. And are you going to be... Um, inspired by a certain style, your classic kind of arcade game, top-down? Um, yeah, I'm going to do something top-down, reminiscent of the old Legend of Zelda games, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And chat, if you have any more questions for Mark, please ask them now as I curate down this list a little bit more. This is really tough. Hard to decide. <laughs> Miriam says, ooh, can't wait for tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. So what do you think was the toughest thing today that you worked on? What gave you the most trouble? I think the hands. Ah. The hands and the arms, because originally I thought I was going to do him with two dogs, either like one small one where he's it's kind of more of a pet, and then his really large dog. Mm -hmm. so I wasn't quite sure. Gotcha. So that was like the big challenge there. And is that why you went with a clenched hand? Yeah, I was like, going to. I don't feel like doing these fingers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have done the fingers just mirror it over mm -hmm. but i was gonna give him a weapon but i thought it was just a little too violent he already has a big dog mm -hmm. no? that makes sense. <laughs> he doesn't really need it yeah. uh john has a question when you first started out did you try to emulate other great artists um hmm. yes and no i would see other artists and see some really particular shapes that i liked mm -hmm. and some really nice simplifications of complex things uh, like there's a really great artist named Robin Davey, I believe, mm. who does amazing vector work. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of learned a lot looking at his work, kind of simplifying things. 
And from there, I started get, making my work a little bit more complicated, kind of subdividing and doing things like that. There you go. So you took inspiration mm -hmm. from someone else, but allowed it to kind of let your style bloom through that. That's awesome. Gary wants to know, do you produce prints of your work? Uh, not right now. I mean, I do have an old Society6 shop, but I haven't updated it in oh. years. How do you feel about Society6? Not sure if I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like it's so easy because I do all the work for you, but mm -hmm. they don't really kick much your way in regards to money. Yeah. Uh, also, I just don't know how reliable their printing is. Oh, okay. I'm like not I'm not like a professional when it comes to printing quality, mm -hmm. but sometimes I just feel like if I knew exactly where I was getting printed and the whole process, I would feel more comfortable. Yeah. But that's not really a critique on them. That's just me being paranoid. Gotcha. I mean, you got to <laughs> protect your art for sure. All right, exactly. we've got these top options over on my screen. Ooh. I'll go through them real quick. All right. Um, they kind of represent the... Mm -hmm. All of the spheres of work that were submitted today, or at least during this segment. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple minutes left, so we could go back over um, feedback. Also, chat, let us know which ones you're a fan of. Let us know your favorites. Um, we like this one because it was, the, had a really nice texture, right, and colors? The texture and the colors, it was just really nice. And I like the typography, too. Yeah. It goes really well with the rest of them. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I wonder if that's actually hand lettered. If so, well done. Props to you. Mm -hmm. And this is just <laughs> such a cute little character. It looks like it's a little statue. Mm -hmm. It's very believable. Got Sirajas. Has really nice movement, I think. Yeah. I think you can bring the whole image a little bit bigger to occupy more of the hey, space. Yeah, that's true. Not too much, though. Yeah. It's just a little, ever so slightly. Yeah. Yeah, that'll just make it totally pop. Mm hmm. Um, and I don't know if you need the rim light around the whole thing. It really works over here because it shows these kind of glowing shapes bouncing off of him, but it might be kind of cool to get rid of them here, even though it might make it less readable. Um, Maybe you can change the white to the dark red that you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'd almost be like the viewer's eye would make up that shape. They would, they would be able to kind of trick themselves into seeing. Mm -hmm. And I that. think it would give it a little bit more volume. Yeah, right. Okay, we're gonna have to go through this a little quicker. My okay. fault. Um, we've got this <laughs> really nice. Really like this one, but I think one. the uh, the stroke can be a little bit thicker. On the actual dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice job, Christopher. Uh, play around a little bit more with the ears, so mm -hmm. it has a little bit more readability. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the contrast up top. Yeah. Overall, this is really nice and yeah. very different from the other submissions. Totally different. Nice job, Julie. It has a very somber kind of ghostly feeling. Got this one by Tatsuya. Very nice. Mm -hmm. A little bit more character in the small dogs would yeah. be great. Cool. I mm -hmm. really <laughs> <It's> Yeah. Really <laughs> Maybe a little bit more difference. Yeah, and the, the moon moves. shapes. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got this nice brushed one mm -hmm. from Michelle. All right, we've got like 30 seconds. Which one wins a free year uh, of Creative Cloud? I'm going to have to go with the silhouette one. Silhouette it's one just by so Julie. different and unique. Totally agree. Love <sighs> to celebrate that uh, on the stream. Nice job, Julie. You are the free winner of <laughs> the winner of the free year of Creative Cloud. Thank you so much for being here with us, everyone. Mark will be back tomorrow, 3 to 5 p.m. on our last day of Adobe Live for the week. Make sure you're here. You ask your final questions. And we're starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow with Logan and Ari. Thank you so much for being here with us, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.